Hello, everyone. Welcome to Advent Preaching, Biblical Preaching Courses, where we will be going over how to preach Christ-centered biblical sermons. So one of the reasons why I was so excited to do this recording and this series is because I remember when I first wanted to preach, it was very hard for me to get information. It was very hard for me to like find books and all these things on preaching that are even videos online of classes. Like this is a topic where, you know, not many people, they upload classes on preaching. And I know why from studying preaching, from reading many books, it's because preaching, biblical preaching is something that you can never say that you know exactly how to do or you've mastered, but it is a learning journey. So I'm excited that you joined us for this series because now you join us on our lifelong journey of learning about Jesus, more of Jesus, and how to preach Jesus effectively. So this is our ministry, Advent Preaching, where we train and equip lay preachers to preach Jesus effectively. And when I say lay preachers, that's for anybody who may not have gone and studied theology or preaching in a formal sense in a school. Maybe they serve as an elder, a deacon, a leader in the church. What they would be defined as is laity, like a member. So we're training and equipping church members or members of the body of Christ to preach Jesus effectively. And throughout all these classes, what we pray to do is to learn how to deliver effective Christ-centered biblical-based sermons. So our goal is to have new classes weekly. We will You'll find these classes at youtube.com slash advent preaching. So you can go there and click the subscribe button and we'll also have them on adventpreaching.com. Me, I'm Christopher Finley. I am currently a master's of divinity student at Andrews Theological Seven. Seventh-day Adventist Theological Seminary. So I'm in school right now. I'm learning. And what I hope to do is offer you quality lectures. If you see our YouTube channel right here, quality lectures where we'll have videos that are anywhere from two minutes long, six minutes long, 12 minutes long, 30 minutes long, even up to 45 minutes. On this channel, you'll find sermons, you'll find devotionals, and it's going to be a learning journey. And what we call it is our preaching learning hub. So for anyone who feels the calling for preaching, our prayer is that we will be able to provide content, resources, and education for all those people that feel the calling to preach, to learn how to preach effectively, or for anyone that wants to improve on their preaching. So this is what you call a learning hub, a learning community where we are all learning together. And what I like about this is they say that when you teach something, it helps you to learn it more. So my prayer and my goal is to continue to gather resources and to continue to teach about preaching so that in the process and journey of that, me as a student, as a lifelong learner, that I will be able to learn and grow also. Amen. So before we move forward, let's pray and let's ask God to bless these lectures and this series. And we pray that you can join us and you could also share this with some friends and loved ones. Right now we have over 970 subscribers. We're praying to get to that thousand mark. So if you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and help us reach the thousand or share this with some friends, we will greatly appreciate it. All right, let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask for your Holy Spirit and your wisdom as we go into learning about preaching and growing in our preaching. I pray that we can know you, Jesus, personally. We could surrender our lives to you. We could walk with you. And as we walk with you, we could effectively preach the gospel through the power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if we start biblical preaching, one of the key points that we have to emphasize is this is a journey of learning together from the master preacher, Jesus. 
And the reason why I make that point is because for anybody who goes and tries to do a preaching course or says that they know about preaching, if they ever claim to know everything about preaching, even if they preach for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, they are still a student. Why? Because every time we go up to preach, it's not us who's preaching. It's the power of the Holy Spirit allowing us to proclaim the Holy Scriptures of God. So what I've come to learn is that who could ever say that they can take up this task of creating a class of teaching people how to preach? Who could ever say that? So no one, only God, only Jesus, only the Holy Spirit could effectively teach others how to proclaim this divine inspired word. So what we come to a conclusion, making this key point early on in this journey, is that this is a journey of learning together from the master preacher who is Jesus Christ. And what we also come to a conclusion of, we can watch a million classes, we could read the Bible a million times, and still we in ourselves are not the one preaching. We can proclaim the word, but it's the power of the Holy Spirit working within us, and it's the power of the Holy Spirit within us touching the hearts of the people. So. What we need to understand is this will be a lifelong journey of learning. So everything we learn today or we learn throughout this series, five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it will still be beneficial to us because we will always be learning when it comes to the word of God and when it comes to preaching. And one of the things that we can do is if through this journey, we know Christ more as a preacher and we understand Christ and his preaching and his sermons and how he preached more than we already won by the grace of God. Because just in this journey of learning more about Jesus and proclaiming his word, then it is already a victory in Jesus name. Amen. So that's what I want to clear up from the beginning that me as myself, even though I am a part of a uh, ministry called Advent Preaching, I don't take the stance that I am a master preacher or I know everything about preaching. But what I do admit is that I love preaching. I love the word of God and I love preaching. And I am willing to, by the grace of God, spend the rest of my life reading, learning about Jesus, the word of God, and surrendering to the word of God so I can continue to learn how to effectively preach the gospel. So this is coming from a student's perspective. I am a student hoping to equip and to help other students and we can grow as a community together. So that is the foundation of why we run this ministry, why we serve in this ministry, why we give our time to this ministry, because we are prayerfully hoping that we continue to learn and grow together. All right. So I want to share this first quote, and this is from Principles and Practice of Preaching. It says, preachers who hope to make Christ live for others must go through a similar experience. They must live with Christ, think with him, commune with him until they come to understand him in terms of their own needs. Then they must have a Holy Spirit-led desire to serve others and to help them understand him in terms of their thinking and living. Okay, so this is very important because when we look at how to preach and what we are going to do with preaching, when we understand what it takes to become a preacher for Jesus, the first thing we need to do is we need to live for Christ. Our whole life has to be lived for Christ. That is a proclaimer of the gospel. When you take the sacred pulpit and to take that responsibility to open up the word of God, to share the words of life with others, the first requirement is that we need to live for Jesus. Our whole life has to be a decision. We need to make a decision as a preacher right now. The first thing that we do before we go into how to preach, how to form a sermon, how are we going to work on our voice or our cadence or all these things. The first thing we need to do is to make a decision right now to say, Lord, I'm going to live for you. 
My life is going to be live for you. Because if we don't live with Christ, if we don't think with him, and when I say live for Christ, that means that we are living in Christ. We are living with Christ. The Bible says that it's not I that live, but it's Christ that lives within me. And the reason why this is so important as the foundation is because if you're not living with Jesus, if Jesus is not your foundation, your everything, if you don't live and breed Christ, then you are never going to effectively preach the gospel, preach the kingdom of heaven. So to live with Christ is to understand and to faithfully live in faith, meaning that I believe that Jesus is omnipresent. I believe that he's omniscient, omniscient. I believe that he has all the, all the wisdom, right? And I believe that Jesus Christ is always present around me, with me, living and powerful. So it's really a life of faith, right? It's really a life of faith. And that's what I want us to know. I want us to understand first and foremost that if we're going to preach Jesus, if we are going to be with Jesus, then we need to understand that that's thinking with him, that's living with him, that's communing with him. And when we understand that, we're coming to an understanding of our own precious needs. So every preacher, every single Christian, every follower of Jesus, we have our own needs and we need Jesus. We need him in every aspect of our life, but there's specific needs that we need Christ for and his help with right now. So it's very important that before we proclaim the gospel, before we even preach a sermon, that we need to look into that sermon in the basis of our own needs. We should never preach a sermon thinking, oh, this is what they need to hear. No, this is what we need to hear. We, where we stand with the people and let them know that it's us as humanity. Together, we all need Christ. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. So in Romans, it says that. So we, we have to understand that we have needs, that the gospel, that Jesus will fulfill if we surrender to him, if we think with him, if we commune with him, if we live in him, he will transform us. But how will we be able to share his saving grace with others if we have not experienced that ourselves? So in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So this shows us that we all need Jesus. So then they must have a Holy Spirit-led desire to serve others and to help them understand him in terms of their thinking and living. All right? So that's what we need to understand first and foremost. So that's what we need to that's what we need to handle first and foremost. The first and foremost thing that we need to understand is that we need to surrender our life to God, live in Christ, commune with God, and to understand him in terms of our own needs. Because once we understand Christ in the terms of our own needs, especially in the scripture that we are going to preach, now it's going to become more personal to us. We are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We are going to be able to be used by God to the maximum capacity. Maximum capacity. Then they must have a Holy Spirit-led desire to serve others and to help them understand him in terms of their thinking and living. Okay, now, when we go to preach the gospel, to, to preach the gospel is to serve. It's to be of service and to help other people understand Jesus and to help other people understand Jesus in terms that they should be living, thinking, communing, and being filled with the Holy Spirit also. So it's we as preachers are surrendered to God, surrendered to the Holy Spirit to work through us. As learners of Christ, as learners of Jesus, not living within ourselves, not thinking within ourselves, not communing with ourselves and our own desires, but communing with the divine creator. And as we are communing with him, as we are surrendered to him, as we are thinking with him, and we are being filled with the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God, 
filled with the Holy Spirit, then we can share this holy word with others. And it is becomes even po more powerful when we have experienced that testimony for ourselves and we want to share that with others. So let's get that first and foremost as the foundation of this journey, knowing Christ as a preacher, living with Christ, communing with him, and then understanding that that's the foundation of all of our preaching. Introduction. When we go to preaching, right, we need to understand that this is a study of the basic theological, theoretical, and practical procedural principles required for the construction and de delivery of effective biblical expository sermons. This is the opportunity for students to do supervised preaching where we can help each other, where if you want to submit your sermons, if you want to email me your sermons, you can email me your sermons, Christopher at AdventPreaching.com or FinleyC at Andrews edu you can you can give me you can you can send me your sermons and we can share our learning together we also have a whatsapp group if you would like to join join it you can just comment below and this is an opportunity for us to give constructive feedback within this context within our ministry to love on each other to help each other improve to help each other lift up christ okay and what is our learning outcomes that we would like from this journey? We would like to have study methods. How do we study the Bible? How do we pre prepare for expository preaching? How do we how do we concentrate on Christ-centered preaching? How do we give learning through outlining, writing, delivering these sermons? How do we actually develop a procedure for when we want to plan our sermons? We have the materials that we need. Okay? So now, when we read James as Stewart in How to Preach, he says that such a person deserves to be called an imposter, then added, no man knows how to preach. So he says, when we when we um, announce a course, how to preach, he said that it's a danger. Because preaching is a lifelong journey. Preaching comes preaching comes from preaching, and learning is a lifelong journey. So now he, this is an author. He wrote a preaching book, and he stated that no one should have or announce that they have a how to preach um class because it's a lifelong journey, and preaching comes from preaching. So as you start preaching, you will learn, and learning is a lifelong journey. I agree and disagree. I agree in the point of, yes, we should always admit that it's a lifelong journey and we know nothing about preaching. But I do, I disagree where if God is calling someone to help learn, grow, train, and equip other preachers, because like John, John Huss did that. John Huss he was one of the reformers. He had lay preachers that he trained that went out and preached the gospel all over. So that was what you would call a how to preach course. So I do believe that these courses are important because there's many people out there who feel the calling to be to be preachers and to preach the gospel, but they just don't know how. They don't know what it takes. And when they go up into the into the pulpit, they might spend 20, 30 minutes on one point that they didn't need to spend on that point that long, or they may not be useful with time or with the outline of a sermon. And if they just had the right training, if they were just equipped, if they were just discipled, they would know how to more effectively share the word of God. So in that context, I do believe that this ministry and service is needed for many people who are seeking. And when they have access to this information, they will be able to share it with others, you know? So I believe that there is a place where God can use this ministry to equip people to effectively preach Jesus. What is the importance of a congregation and preaching in a church setting? First of all, when you preach and you have a congregation and you have an audience, you have 
genuine inspiration. How? Because before you preach, you can go out there and you visit. You get to know people. As you get to know the people, you start to know their situation. You start to know what they're going through. And based on knowing what the people are going through, the Lord will bring sermons to you. And, the, and, and you will also get feedback. You know, you could have people who are going through so many struggles, so much pain, and they say, ah, oh, Pastor, I really thank you for that word that you gave me. It really encouraged me to not give up, to keep going. And that's how the Holy Spirit could work through you as a preacher, where when you are filled with the Spirit and the Spirit is letting you know what should you preach, now you could go visit the people, get to know what they're going through, and then you could preach the words of life to them that could give them strength to keep going for that next week. You know, and even lead them in the direction that has them seek God more and seek his word more and seek to grow in a relationship with Jesus. So this is why it's so important for us to understand that congregations, the flock that God has given us is actually exactly what we need to be able to grow in our preaching and to share the words of life to them. A person learns to preach by preaching regularly over a period of years, while at the same time he is appraising and approving his techniques in the light of recognized principles. And that is by John T. Jones, Principles in Preaching. So that is true. You know, when you get to preach, I remember even as a student, I grew, I grew in my preaching when I was preaching for Wednesday night worship. I was preaching at different churches every week, weekend. It was really a, a blessing from God. We never become master preachers. We will always be learning and growing. And that's what I wa always want us to understand that, like, we emphasize this. When you come on this journey of preaching, the journey is this, that you just continue to grow. You continue to learn. You continue to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes. And as you learn from the mistakes you make, you come, God is able to sharpen you. God is able to uh, take off the dross. God is able to put you in the fire and, and to, to mold you to where he needs you to be. And this is where we have to also understand the relationship to growth in skill and knowledge, where as we continue to learn new skills, as we continue to learn the knowledge of the gospel, the knowledge of Jesus, this is where we will continue to grow. You know, um, the preacher must win his skill afresh every time, meaning that every single time we go to preach, this is not us saying, like, oh, I know everything. No, every time we surrender before the scriptures, we ask God to give us wisdom because as we grow and we go through life, the Matthew 24, 14 or Matthew 5, verse 6 to 8, the Sermon on the Mount, those scriptures come alive to us. Because we have new experiences. We have new things that we've went through. So the preaching skill that we have is it's the ability to use knowledge effectively. And knowledge is forever increasing and undergoing revision. Methods of utilizing it must therefore undergo modification from time to time. And this is also from John uh, Jones, Lion T. So the reason why I'm saying this is so important is because when we start to realize and we start to surrender to this lifelong journey of preaching the gospel, talking about the life, death, resurrection of Jesus Christ, emphasizing the fact that Jesus is coming soon to take us home, to dwell with us in perfect peace, to put an end to sin. We, we surrender ourselves and as we, as we continue to learn and grow and gain knowledge, every time we go to the scriptures, we surrender ourselves again and watch the miracle of God to work through us as we surrender to him, as we walk with him, as we abide in him and watch him preach sermons through us that by the grace of God will win souls for the kingdom of heaven and transform lives. Not, even, not only the lives of our listeners, but the lives of ourselves. Amen. Amen. So let's pray for that. Father in heaven, we want to pray that, Lord, you will work through us. The power of the Holy Spirit will be our foundation of our life. Us surrender to God will be our life. And we would submit to a lifelong journey of learning how to preach the gospel. A lifelong journey of learning to know that this will forever be our study. How to get to know you more. How to abide in you 
how to surrender to you, how to know you, how to live with you, how to communion with you, how to think with you, Jesus. And as we surrender our lives to you on this lifelong journey, that you will continue to sharpen our skills. You will continue to hone us. You will work within us. You will make us powerful preachers. Why? Because we are surrendered to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. That is our first lecture. We Let's take a break and pause. And then you can go get a drink of water. And you could come back and watch the next video in this series. God bless you all. And if you find this video is helpful, again, please help us to get our resources and our education that we are providing for people who all who have been called to preach the gospel, that they have these resources for them. If you know one preacher in your life, if you know just one person, if you could please send this video to them, we will greatly appreciate your help in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and equipping more preachers to proclaim the word of life to humanity. God bless you all. And we'll see you soon in our next video.